Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for my client Mike's vlog, and uh, let's get right to it. So, Mike is now getting really fatigued from his cut. For the unaware, we pretty much bulked Mike for, for two years. Uh, we took him all the way up to 230, and he's been cutting down. We want to go down to 200 over time. I believe he's, he's now over the halfway point. And we're really starting to see some of that fatigue mount up. You know, that bench looked real clean. So he's like, I can easily go up 20 pounds. You know, it's just 315 plus some chains. He's paused bench 350 on camera before. You know, and then after that, he's like, no, it's too heavy. So we had to actually stop there. Uh, I have to have him stop there. But the same thing as we got through the week on, on his uh, floor presses. You know, this is what happens when you guys cut. All you guys who are like get to a certain size and you that you want to get ripped and it's the downside your pressing strength's going to be a real fight you're just going to tank um you know particularly you drug free guys which mike is a drug free lifter so like he got 245 for those tens on the floor presses but later in the week he could only really handle 225 he couldn't do multiple sets with 245 so you'll see that later in the week it's down to just two plates uh, we are pushing his triceps a little bit harder. We're doing band work. We're going to do JM presses. We need to get his triceps stronger. We started seeing a little tricep possible weakness coming out on uh, some of his heavier lifts. And so I'm like, let's get work on those triceps. Let's get the band work going again. Let's get the JM presses going again because that stuff really helped you in the past. And let's mitigate this so that we can try to keep that bench high as he gets down to about 200 pounds. You know, because it was a case of, you know, health and not even competitiveness yet because he hasn't stepped on a platform yet, All right? This guy's put up pretty good numbers. He still hasn't competed. He's still technically a recreational lifter, All right? He's still a recreational lifter, but we've gotten him damn strong. We've had a lot of fun doing it. Um, but, you know, the thing to keep in mind with him, uh, people say, so why do all this? It's really not that hard. It's just consistency. Like, people act like it's a super big deal to, you know, get to a 500 squat or a 300 bench. It really isn't. Uh, he's not a, necessarily a gym obsessed guy. He loves training. He's done it for over a decade, right? He said he was stuck at like a 300 bench actually under when he came to me. Um, and we got all that up. So we've gotten him substantially stronger because he just wants to get strong and he enjoys strength training. He, he likes the idea of powerlifting, but he hasn't competed yet. Uh, but that's kind of the whole point with Mike. Uh, he's got other stuff going on in his life. He's got a very good career, very successful at what he does. And that's kind of the thing that people forget is people who enjoy training or want to be fit, who have disposable income, hire coaches. Like, it's just not a big deal. Not a big deal to them. Right? That's why one of the things I try to remind people of, not all my clients compete. Many of them are just financially successful. They want to be fit and strong. And that's okay. Those are going to be your very reliable clients. As much as I love my competitors who maybe don't have much money, as far as clients go, they can't always afford coaching long term. And therefore, they just don't get the same results. You know, whereas in guys like this who can afford it long term, they end up being stronger than your competitors. Because it really isn't that difficult. This, the training looks hard, but we've built up to it over time. Um, and it's just not any different than just going to the gym and doing something else. It, it really isn't, guys. People act like oh, this training that we do is so hard or even what I do. or whatever. It really isn't. It's about consistency, intelligent programming. But it's really not as hard as you think it is. Like once you're strong, a 600-pound deadlift actually just doesn't even feel that heavy. It just doesn't. That's just the way it is. So to them, it's no different than, you know, training for anything else or hiring a personal trainer. It's just that I get people really big and really strong because we have good programming and maybe the other people who are hiring one doesn't. And they're just consistent. They're just consistent. And Mike's very, very, very consistent. All right? People are like, well, what these work sets, they look pretty heavy sometimes. Well, yeah, because he's built to that. It's just about, it really is about consistency with good programming. This whole idea everyone has, oh, beast mode, training hard, it's bullshit. <laughs> I don't train that hard. And you guys watched me deficit deadlift 600 pounds in my late 40s the other day. You guys watched me safety bar squat 
ass to grass over 500, like 520 the other day. Yes, you see the point? I don't think I train that hard. It's not beast mode. It's getting up and getting work done. It's consistency. But you guys see kind of what Mike's training looks like. Uh, you know, so this week we did a lot of the band work. Uh, for max effort lower day, we did uh, 405 on the cambered bar for a squat, which the cambered bar is tough for him. Some people are like, why are you strong on the cambered bar? Or is everyone really strong on it? No, no. Mike squatted 480 on camera before. That 405 on the camber bar was fairly heavy for him because it, it hammers his weak links. He's probably just as strong on the safety bar as he is on the cambered bar. So we, we uh, but we do seal rows. We did safety bar good mornings. He does glute ham raises, reverse hypers. All right, speed bench day. We did chains this week. Uh, we do three grips, medium, close, and wide. Right, so we, we do a third of the work with each of the different grips for him because he's stronger on the wide grip bench. So obviously we, we train all the movements. Whereas in, you see me, you'll see people like Michelle, we mostly only do closed grip. But I may change that. I might go over to rotating the three myself on my speed benching again. I used to do it. it might be worth doing, right? It might be worth doing. In the event I ever wanna mess with wider grip benching for meets again, I don't know that I do. Just close grip and just keep getting stronger to build triceps. But, you know, back to the point, Mike does all three. All right, floor press. Um, and I love the floor press for Mike. The floor press probably did the most for his bench. Out of everything I've ever had Mike use as a tool, the floor press has always worked very, very consistently for him. It works for his leverages. And of course, look at his range of motion. He, touch, he can touch with it. Barely touch his chest, just the edge, just barely tap the shirt. So, you know, it makes a lot of sense that the, he gets so much out of the floor press. He gets a lot out of JM presses, too. Like, if I were to narrow it down and say which movements help Mike get to that 350 bench, uh, floor press, JM press variations, right? Those have been his bread and butter. They have always worked well for him. A lot of the other stuff's just fillers, hypertrophy you know, giving us some different stuff to not get overused from these movements. You know, give us a couple specialty bars to floor press with. You know, we're kind of in a good position. Same with the JM pressing. You know, we can do chains, we can do reverse bands, whatever we need to do to avoid overuse for that. And speaking of the bands, having him do the, all the band work again, I want to keep those elbows healthy uh, while we do the JM presses. So he does his pull-ups, and of course he does some band press downs after. And then we get over to dynamic effort lower day. You guys will also notice if you look at the sheet, some of his volumes are going down. And it's because we're, we're really seeing the fatigue accumulate as he's continuing to cut. And he still needs to lose something like, I don't know, another 12 pounds of fat. I need to see where he's at. He's, he's somewhere around 212 to 215, I think, at the moment. Um, I, I would need to double check. I'm not looking at his numbers right now. But it's somewhere in that range. So... He's past the halfway point because we were at 230, wanted to take him down to two. Uh, but the volumes have come down a little bit because we are seeing that fatigue accumulate as you know from the higher volume sessions. All right, dynamic lower, he did safety bar against bands. That's always that's always a win for him. It's always a win for him. And uh, this phase we're doing conventional against bands on the speed pulls, right? I alternate sumo and conventional for him. Uh, belt squats. And I only have him do belt squats once a week. His quads are big. They're not a weak link in anything that we do. I'm not overly worried about them. If anything, I really want his lower back stronger. If I were to still pinpoint his biggest weak link, lower back. Lower back. I mean, some of his movements, it almost looks like hamstring. But look at his hamstrings and look at his hamstring strength on those other movements. Possibly glutes. Low back is absolutely a weak link for, for Mike, though. And it has been a long time. And we were still having to always work with it. And I never get it where I want it. Uh, but, you know, he needs to always have access to a reverse hyper. All right. It's our bread and butter for him. I mean, we can use good mornings. But, you know, it, it still doesn't get his low back as strong as I would like. 
So if he doesn't have the reverse hyper, I almost need him to have back extensions of some type available. Or we could just good morning him into the ground. The problem is the fatigue end. If we're eating enough and sleeping enough, we can get away with it. And it works very, very well. But everything has to be perfect. And when he's cutting, that's not, that's not gonna work. We really benefit from those specialty tools in that case. Uh, and of course, he's, he's about to move again. So he should have access to a power gym again. I'm hoping he'll be able to film and vlog there. But we don't know for a fact yet that he will. All right, so after that, of course, we do good mornings. All right, we do good mornings. And we do rotate bars periodically. We rotate bars because you see back there, there's a cambered bar in the background. I'm a big fan of that. That and the safety bar for GMs. Uh, we do glued ham raises. And then he finishes up with reverse hypers. Again, no surprise. It's like we see with some of my other people, my, my clients who have access to a glued ham raise and a reverse hyper, we're gonna tend to do them a lot. We're gonna tend to do them a lot. So I'm gonna let you guys finish up watching what he's doing. So I hope it has been informative and I'll talk to you guys next time.